हेलो एवरी वन आई होप ऑल यूर डूइंग वेरी गुड इन योर लाइफ सो टूडेज टॉपिक इज वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट टॉपिक फॉर एज पर विथ यू सिलेबस लेट्स बिग इन विथ फर्स्ट वन रिलेशन बिटवीन शेयरिंग स्ट्रेन एलॉन्गेशन स्ट्रेन एंड कंप्रेशन स्ट्रेन सेकेंड वन इज रिलेशन बिटवीन यंग्स मॉडलस रेजिडिटी मॉडलस एंड पॉइजन्स रेशो थर्ड वन इज रिलेशन बिटवीन बल्क मॉडलस यंग्स मॉडलस एंड पॉइजन्स रेशो these are the three important derivation which may come in your syllabus or in your semester exam for 8 or 10 marks so that's why i told you that never miss any update in this video so let's begin before we begin with this video i would like to request you to subscribe to my channel hit a bell icon so that you never miss any kind of updates and if you like this video please like it if you don't like this also then also it's okay you don't like it and don't forget to share with your friends let's begin let's start to understand what is shear stress shear stress is equals to f by a so force divided by area so let us consider a cube where one face of the cube is very free to move another face of the cube is fixed on a base so when we applied a force on free surface then that cube will move for an angle and that angle we call it as a theta as we can see in this video base will be fixed as we can see in this video at the same time one surface will be free to move for an distance and what is that distance we take it as delta x next that l is the total length of that cube okay next the theta is an angle shear stress means there is change in shape not in a volume how much is a change in shape how much angle is changed that is tan theta theta we calculated by this so tan how we get it tan means opposite side by adjacent side which one is opposite side which one is adjacent side this delta x is opposite side and l is the adjacent side let us take shear strain is equals to delta x by l this is we call it as shear strain which we are using in the derivation which is most important term let us see the derivation part let's start the derivation relation between shearing strain elongation strain and compression strain or we can also say that shear longitudinal strain and bulk strain so let's begin the derivation in this derivation we are considering a b c d a cube having l is the length of each side f is the force applied along ad let a b c d is displaced to position a b c d through a shearing l angle theta draw a m and d n perpendicular to diagonal ac and bd respectively then ac is equals to mc and bd is equals to bn now nd is extension in bd and am is a compression in ac in the next step we can see longitudinal strain along bd that is equals to nd by b dash d dash take it as equation number 1 then compression strain along ac that is equals to am by a dash c dash In the next step we are using Pythagoras theorem where ac is equals to bd we take it as under root 2 into l take it as equation number 3 so right angled isosceles triangle a d b is 45 degree if a d c is 90 degree then half of that we can say 45 degree angle if a angle adb is 45 degree angle then that means angle a d dash b also 45 degree angle from the equation n d dash is equals to 
d into d dash cos 45 degree so cos 45 is nothing but under root 2 take it as equation number 5 from equation number 1 3 5 we get longitudinal strain that is equals to d d dash divided by 2l but theta we already know that d dash d into d dash by l from triangle c d d dash we already know how we got theta is equals to d by dl before we start this derivation we already got this equation like that we solved it now we got longitudinal strain is that is equals to theta by 2 take it as equation number 6 similarly we can show that in a compression side we can also write it as theta by 2 take it as equation number 7 from equation number 6 and 7 longitudinal strain plus compression strain we will get theta this is the shearing strain so this is the end of the derivation and this derivation may ask for 8 marks or 10 marks definite question in semester exam in the next derivation we will see the relation between Young's modulus rigidity modulus and Poisson's ratio let's start the derivation same cube which we already used in yes de derivation see let us consider a b c d is a cube dc is the fixed surface ab is the free surface once we applied force on a surface ab then there will be a shift in a shape that a to a dash b to b dash a to a dash the distance between a to a dash is delta x and the distance between b to b dash is delta x in a upper surface area of the cube now shear stress is applied as we already know that that is the force we are going to apply it on the surface upper surface so force divided by area force divided by area is nothing but f divided by x square so x square f divided by x square is nothing but t t means tensile stress once we got the equation for stress then let us see what is strain shearing strain that is equals to displacement of upper space or surface divided by side of the cube as we already know how we got this theta is equals to delta x by original x in previous video we take a ad atwa dc or cb or pa the length between ad and dc and cb and pa that we taken l in this derivation we considered x so that's why theta is equals to delta x by uh, x take it as equation number one next rigidity modulus means shear stress by shear strain as we already got the equation for shear strain and shear stress just applied in this equation we got n equal to t by theta take it as equation number two due to applied tangential force on force per surface a b so tensile stress acts along d b and compressive stress acts along a c so as we already know in while we are studying poisons ratio alpha strain coefficient and beta means lateral strain coefficient by considering these two let's continue the derivation then the elongation of the diagonal db due to tensile stress that is db is equals to t into alpha and also elongation of the diagonal due db due to compressive stress that is db into t into beta therefore the total elongation in the length the of db is equals to db into t into alpha plus beta take it as equation number three now drop bn perpendicular to d b dash then n b dash is the elongation in length db now considering the triangle p n p dash we get the equation delta x into 1 divided by under root 2 take it as equation number 4 by using equation number 3 and 4 
we get db dot t into alpha plus beta that is equals to delta x 1 divided by under root 2 by solving we get n into alpha plus beta in is equal to 1 by 2 on rearranging the equation we will get ultimately n is equals to 1 by 2 alpha into 1 plus beta by alpha as we already know that 1 by alpha is nothing but Young's modulus and beta by alpha is nothing but Poisson's ratio which we already derived in a previous concept while we are studying Poisson's ratio. So by using these relations we are going to apply it in above equation we will get n equals to y by 2 into 1 by 1 plus sigma. This is an ultimate equation while we trying to solve this derivation. This is an important derivation which may come for 8 or 10 marks. In the last derivation, we are going to find out the relation between bulk modulus, Young's modulus and Poisson's ratio. So to begin with, let's start the derivation part. Let us consider one unit cube that is A, B, C, D, P, Q, R, S. Each side of the cube is one unit. So let us take Tx, Ty, Tz be the tensile stress acting to the normal parallel to the surface perpendicular to x, y, z axis respectively. Now the side AB is elongated due to Tx and at the same time contracted due to ty and tz press ty and tz like that the side ad is elongated due to ty and contracted due to ty tz and tx at the same time the side ap is elongated due to tz and contracted due to tx and ty if alpha is the elongation strain coefficient and beta is the contraction strain coefficient then new length of the side may be take it as ab is equals to 1 plus tx into alpha minus ty into beta minus tz into beta this means at the length ab where 1 means there is an elongation plus with respect to Tx alpha is the elongation coefficient so the elongation may be seen along with x axis or, or else Tx axis so and other side compression will be seen along with Ty and Tz so that's why we use beta like that with the same plane ad and ap we can write it as ad is equals to 1 plus ty because there is an elongation uh, in ty so ty into alpha minus tz beta minus tx beta and ap is equals to 1 plus tz alpha minus tz tx into beta minus ty into beta this is an equation we got it for a new volume once we apply the stress along tx ty and tz with respect to ab ad and ap therefore the new cube volume can say ab into ad into ap nothing but length into breadth into height Th then we can calculate the new cube value here ab into ad into ap write it down as we can see it below by solving this equation we can write it as tx equal to ty equal to tz e that is equals to t so once we can calculate it and we got the new volume that is equals to 1 plus 3t into alpha minus 2 beta therefore change in volume is nothing but 
delta v is equals to 1 plus 3t into alpha minus 2b minus 1. Now, in the change in volume delta v plus 1 and minus 1 will be cancelled and then we got 3t into alpha minus 2 beta. So, let us consider bulk strain equation that is change in volume by initial volume is nothing but delta v divided by uh, capital V. So, delta v is for change in volume initial volume original volume we already take it as 1 so 3 into alpha minus 2 beta divided by 1 so solving the above equation we can write it as 3 t into alpha minus 2 beta as a bulk strain now consider bulk modulus bulk modulus means bulk stress divided by bulk strain so bulk stress is nothing but we are applying a stress on a cube so t e we denoted as t so t divided by 3 t into alpha minus 2 beta we already calculated in a bulk strain so writing it and where t t get cancelled because same so that means bulk modulus k is equals to 1 by 3 into alpha minus 2 beta that is equals to 1 by 3 into 1 minus 2 beta by alpha so we already know what is 1 by alpha and beta by alpha so 1 by alpha is nothing but young's modulus and beta by alpha is nothing but sigma that means poisons ratio ultimately we got the equation k is equals to y by 3 into 1 minus 2 sigma this is an equation when we derive the relation between bulk modulus young's modulus and poisons ratio these are the most important derivation we may got in a semester exam for 8 or 10 marks question so don't neglect this part and we covered each and every steps which we involved to derive these derivation so i hope all you got it whatever we try to explain in this video if you like this video please like it subscribe to my channel and share it to your friends thank you